So now, uh, Professor Patri Patricia Lavandum from uh, Brussels in Belgium, who's going to talk about pain management after C-section. Uh, thank you, Helen. So we know that C-section is, is perhaps the most uh, common procedure over the world, with more than 20 million of uh, C-section a year. But still, it's one of the most painful procedures because, by example, pain after post cesarean section rank nine over uh, 180 procedure. And we know that poorly relieved postoperative pain is bad for the patient. And in the case of C-section, it will interfere with the immediate recovery of the, the mother and will decrease the bonding between the child and the mother. And also, it can have more uh, long-term consequences. And by example, uh, we have persistent pain and also an increased risk for postpartum depression. However, uh, the management of pain after cesarean section is uh, particularly special, and also it's a challenge for us. And it's a matter of education, education of the patient and also education of the caregivers. Because the mother, most of the time, are reluctant to take analgesics because they are feared to, to cause damage to their child. And so if you ask the mother, 20% of them will tell you that they would like to, to get more analgesics in the postpartum period. And also a majority of doctors and nurses are afraid of the side effect of analgesics in breastfeeding mother. This is particularly bad because we are now in a time for ERAS, enhanced recovery after surgery, and the C-section uh, fits perfectly in this context because the mother wants to recover very quickly to go home and take care of uh, the child. And uh, to, uh, to do uh, enhanced recovery after surgery, uh, the, the base is to provide a good analgesia to the patient. In the case of C-section, we have three types of pain. We have pain at rest, pain associated with mobilization, which is particularly difficult to relieve with opioid alone. And also we have visceral pain related to uterine cramping. And I would say that the base is uh, on a non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug based regimen. Because anti-inflammatory drug will help to release pain associated to mobi with mobilization and also visceral pain. An anti-inflammatory drug, we all know they have a very good opioid sparing effect. And by this way, they will decrease the opioid related side effect like nausea, vomiting and also sedation. We don't have to be afraid to administrate anti-inflammatory drug to breastfeeding mother because the transfer of the, the drug into the breast milk is very low. So this is really the base for postoperative analgesia after C-section. But we will say, what about opioid in the context of a C-section? Because a lot of these procedures are still performed under spinal anesthesia, we were used to administrate a low dose of intrathecal morphine to the patient. And still, we are doing this. And today, the recommendation is to go for very low dose of spinal morphine maximum 100 microgram intrathecal morphine. If you uh, give to the mother higher dose, you will not get better, uh, longer analgesic effect or better opioid sparing effect after the procedure, but you will only have more side effect like nausea, vomiting and pruritus. In the time of enhanced recovery after surgery, there is no need to keep an IV line longer to give and to use uh, uh, intravenous patient control analgesia device with morphine because oral opioids are as effective as intravenous morphine and they cause less drowsiness and less nausea. Another question in the time of enhanced recovery after surgery in the context of C-section is the use of peripheral nerve block and local regional uh, analgesia. In the past, the TAP block has shown impressive results. And now we have more studies allowing us to compare the TAP block, so the transverse abdominis 
abdominis uh, plane block with other techniques. By example, if you compare the tab block with intratecal morphine, there is no difference. And there is no advantage, advantage to combine a tab block with intratecal morphine in the patient. The tab block is also slightly more effective than a combination of the ilio-hypogastric and ilio-inguinal uh, peripheral nerve block. And the tab block is as effective as a continuous uh, intra-wound infiltration of local anesthetic. The problem with the tab block is that there is a very high systemic absorption of the local anesthetic by this route, and it could potentially uh, lead to toxic concentration of the local anesthetic into the blood. So finally, as we have discussed here before in the panel, we go more and more to individualize uh, treatment for postoperative pain management. And we can see that some patients, some women, will uh, have more severe pain after cesarean section than other one. The problem is that uh, today we don't have a highly reliable test uh, to predict that a woman will have more pain than another one. We can suspect it, but in this case, uh, looking to the literature, it could be interesting to combine a low dose of intravenous ketamine, an antihypergesic dose, 0.3 mg per kilo, at the time of the spinal anesthesia to decrease postoperative pain, decrease the need for postoperative opioid, and also to have a better control on the stress response. Thank you very much, Patricia. So um, I'd like to ask you first, you showed us a lot of different techniques or different uh, interventions for analgesia after C-section, and surgical morphine, tab block, and said, so which one would you recommend? Which one, are the, which one is the optimal protocol if you want to do ERAS after a C-section? I don't know if there is an optimal protocol, but by example, in my hospital, we do an enhanced recovery or fast track recovery after C-section. And for that, we don't use the spinal morphine uh, because we are afraid of the side effect, nausea, vomiting, and uh, pruritus. But we, we use oral opioid, uh, anti-inflammatory drug, of course, and we combine it with uh, either a tab block, bilateral uh, single shot tab block, or bilateral single shot ilioinguinal, iliohypogastric uh, peripheral nerve block that we perform in the uh, recovery room after the C-section. Okay. And so, do you think uh, so? Is your protocol that type of protocol? Is it uh, optimal for all women, or I is are there like we just said about uh, knee surgery or other surgery? Uh, do we need to be more patient-centered, and is there some women where in which is in who is not going to work? And for example, women that are at risk for more severe pain after surgery, do we need to change our protocols and how? I think the protocol that we use now is working for uh, a large majority of women. And but I told you that a lot of women don't like to complain because they don't want more analgesic. There is really an educational problem uh, after C-section. But of course, there are some women we can suspect, by example, the, the patient who suffer chronic pain, uh, like fibromyalgia, uh, chronic back pain, chronic headache. We know that this patient will have more severe postoperative pain. And in this woman, it should be interesting to, to combine uh, a small dose of uh, ketamine for no is the only uh, study that we have is about ketamine, but perhaps other drug could be uh, used too uh, to help to manage the pain in this patient. So I have a question coming here on the chat um, asking about intracycle morphine and uh, it the, um, the fellow, because she's a fellow, is asking what are the risks in pregnant women of intracycle morphine and the risk of um, apnea higher or not? Yes, the, the big debate about intratecal morphine is the risk of long-lasting delayed uh, apnea in the in the patient. And by example, it's why when you administrate intratecal morphine, uh, uh, we have guidelines re requesting that the nurse will assess the respiratory rate and the uh, blood uh, saturation, oxygen saturation, every two hours for the first six hours and then every uh, four hours for the next hour. So 
uh, it's a lot of um, uh, close uh, follow-up of the patient. Uh, but with the very low dose of uh, spinal morphine, I think we are quite safe. And in the publication, the respiratory depression is very, very rare. The patient at high risk are the obese patient, very obese patient or patient with a well-known sleep apnea. Okay, thank you. Uh, the same fellow, uh, I don't know where she's from, but she's uh, very active. Thank you for your question. So she's asking also, what do you think about uh, aponevrotic infiltration? with local anesthetics? Aponevrotic, she means uh, intra-wound infiltration? Think, yes, that's what she means. Yes, I think intra-wound infiltration is working very well and we test it in my hospital. We administrate uh, diclofenac, so anti-inflammatory drug directly into the wound. It's working very, very well because the inflammatory reaction is, uh, is locally uh, uh, created. But the problem is that uh, a single shot wound infiltration will not work very well and not very long. So you need to have a catheter in place and every catheter that you, you give to the woman is a little bit in contradiction with the concept of enhanced recovery after surgery. Yes. So it's why we have moved to this uh, local infiltration to the single shot uh, peripheral nerve block and ilioaguinal, iliohypogastric is working very well and uh, could be perhaps safer than a tab block because the absorption of the drug is uh, lower. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So, yes, you yes, have a I question? Have a, I have a question. It's far from all the topics uh, here. But uh, in my experience, when we switch from uh, 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 standard care to a nurse, that means from enhanced recovery after surgery, we, we observe that the quality of analgesia improved even when we don't change the analgesic protocol. So my question is, does the, the enhanced recovery after surgery uh, enhance also the quality of analgesia? And this is for, for all uh, for our speaker, of course, uh, because uh, I think the, uh, the patient or the patient take care of itself and uh, are, are pushed outside the hospital, maybe it's, uh, it's some kind of, of improvement in, in the care. So this is my question. Is it? Uh, is I there think an answer? yes. Xavier will agree with me. When you <laughs> you move to ERAS, everything is central on the patient, mm. and so it works very well because everyone is motivated. The surgeon motivated, anesthesiologist, the nurse, and the patient also motivated. Xavier, this what is, is exactly your experience? Your, exactly uh, what the way I mean, because you know, you 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 move the patient from a sort of uh, I would say uh, a sort of medical. Uh, self-inflicted victim <laughs> to a <laughs> partner, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay, so it's it's very very important uh, to keep that in mind. And most importantly, it's like you know what we, what we call in research the O-torn effect. So we take care to the patient mm -hmm. most importantly, and in that fact, we have uh, best results. Okay, uh, I will. I, I want to to comment about your question. It's a very good question, in fact, and. Um, it's true that the fact that the patient is in the center of the interest of all the medical uh, personnel, it's very important. But if you look carefully to all the ERAS uh, uh, result, you will notice that usually the analgesic score are not always as good as what we could do before. Just as you mentioned with the peripheral nerve and now with infiltration, exactly with the epidural and now with uh, less invasive technique. But the thing is with the enhanced uh, recovery protocol is that we take into account as a factor than analgesia, which are also very important for the recovery of the patient and who sometimes were compromised by our uh, analgesic technique. So we have to take into account all this fact and that's the reason why sometimes we sit, we switch to other techniques which are perhaps less effective in terms of analgesia, but which are more, uh, m uh, which are better for the recovery of the patient. Thank you. Well, bef I have uh, a very, very quick question for you, Patricia, coming from the same fellow, so I want her to have all the answers. <laughs> so, but it's a very quick answer because we are going to have to wrap things up. She's asking if the maximal dose for esophageal morphine is it uh, five uh, mi micrograms per kilo? Is it the maximum dose? It's, is the it's not in the literature. It's not in 
in micrograms per kilo. The maximum will be 100 micrograms total okay. because when you go for uh, spinal administration, it's not in micrograms per kilo. Okay. It's not like a okay. peripheral nerve block and local analgesic. So 100 like micrograms. It's the maximum. Okay. So 100 micrograms. So, uh, well, it's already the end of this very interesting session. So I'm going to try to um, give some take-home messages. Uh, as we all said, I think the main message in here is that uh, pain management is becoming more and more personalized on the patient, patient-centered. And so we need to indiv individualize um, the protocols that we have. We know what's working, but it might need a little change for this very specific patient. And then if we go back to uh, colectomy, I think the main message was um, IV lidocaine is an alternative to uh, epidural. And NSAIDs, we should not be afraid of NSAIDs and use them after colectomy. For tonsillectomy, I think I would say the same thing. NSAIDs, NSAIDs, NSAIDs. Don't be afraid and um, prescribe them systematically around the clock, uh, not when needed. And then you're probably going to need less rescue analgesia that we don't really want to use after tonsillectomy. After knee uh, surgery, the whole message is really personalized medicine. We have a lot of different techniques available, but we need to be centered on the patient. And finally, after C-section, I would say um, one more time, NSAIDs, don't be afraid. Uh, C-section is still painful, and we shouldn't be afraid of using NSAIDs. Thank you very much, Jean, Swell. Xavier, Patricia, for this session. Thank you all for watching. And you'll be able to see the replay uh, within a few days next week. You can see the replay for one year on the website of the SFAR. Thank you very much. Thank you.